time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. Well, it may be more planking, less getting locked and loaded today, my friends. Welcome to Power Hour Live, Tuesday, December 12th. Premium's non-existent, unless you're interested in a uh, $5 straddle, less than $5 straddle. I am not. I've got a... Uh, hit my 50% on my quiet lunch. That was good for about 2,500. I've got a PM iron condor that's up 22%. That's up another 2,100. So I'm gonna let my PM iron condor continue to work till it hits 50%, but I will not be taking any power hour trades. Uh, I also did a discretionary RIC on the before the bond auction. That one's trying to make its way out of the valley. So I'm going to try to scratch a little profit out of that one if it keeps going up a little bit. S&P up 12 and a half, NASDAQ up 94. Russell, slightly green. Dow, up 130. Gold and silver, slightly green. Notes and bonds, a little bit green. Ten-year yield, down three-quarters of a percent, down to 4.209. Oil and natty gas are moving. Oil's down 3.5%. Natural gas, down 5.72. Soybeans, down a percent. Wheat, up two over 2.5%. Two Corn, a little bit green. Euro and the pound, a little bit green. Bitcoin, a little bit green. VIX, our buddy VIX, down over 6%, down to 11.83, hit a low of 11.81. Just slowly bleeding us dry. I mean, as calm as this market is, if there's any premium, I would consider doing something, but I just, I can't, I can't get behind a $5 straddle or a $2 strangle, $2, you go, you go five wide and get two bucks. If anyone's interested. SPX pushing highs of day. Had a little bond auction that did a little, little dance, a little dance and jiggy. Tiny, tiny movement, and then just kind of drifted, drift, drifted higher. Make sure none of my power hour bots are on. Yeah, they're all off. I did do a one, two and a one, three B and B double calendar earlier. Both of those are up a little bit. I've got my six, seven. That's up a few percent was up more.
What are you guys doing? You guys doing anything? Dick K, are you playing something? SPX is up 0.4% from the open. So not an update territory. I mean, if I was going to do anything at all, maybe I'd sell some puts, but no thanks. Yeah, so tomorrow's FOMC, so I won't be doing any morning trades. Uh, but we will be streaming live for FOMC, so I'll be doing my my FOMC trades. We got PPI pre market. Oh, got getting out of my scratching out of tiny profit in my uh, my Rick. Started with nine. I've got five left. So... What do you guys want to talk about today? <laughs> what can we talk about today since, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to be trading. Anybody new here have any questions? Anybody old here have any questions or topics? Now's your chance. Uh, Cosmo, check my trade plan. You'll see the two FOMC trades that I do. The first is a an iron condor, and that is entered just before the data is released. There goes the rest of my Rick. I've got one one Rick runner left in case this thing really wants to push higher. So the uh, the FOMC iron condor goes on right after the data is released. And then it stays on for about 25 minutes and is taken off right before the press conference. And then right after the press conference starts, I put on a, uh, a long strangle to try to capture some movement during the, during or after the presser. Uh, White Tiger P2H. That's that's something Tim Weiss does. Uh, I've got a couple of PM Iron Condors um, that are part of my plan. So if they if the right criteria sets up and all that good stuff, then then I'll take those. But I'm not I'm not taking any every day. Just you know, two hours before the market closes or anything like that. Uh, if I remember right, Madam Butterfly, uh, I think he, he still enters in the morning, but I, I don't, I'm not playing the morning. I mean, Theta will sit there and decay very slowly. So you're taking the risk, but you're just, you're not getting paid for it. I'd rather wait until right before the data is released and you'll get almost the same credit, if not the same credit, and then just play it that way. If you look at the trade logs. I think you'll notice that none of the profit targets ever get hit until after the, the data is released. Bumblebee, in regards to the short squeeze, how does one know that there is a short squeeze on an underlying at any point of time? Well, I mean, there's not... Are you referring just to what we call a short squeeze? Like when the S&P is up a half percent? Or are you talking about a true short squeeze? Well, the S&P, we just, I mean, for me, and I, I don't call it a short squeeze just because that was um, 
you know, it's not really a short squeeze, but uh, what Tim Weiss refers to as a short squeeze is when the S&P is up half percent from the open. So I don't know, uh, Bumblebee, if you have toss, um, you can go in the zero DTE course channel and there's, and you can put this indicator on. So for example, right now, the current move is the S&P is at 0.42% from the open. So it's not, not quite there today, for example. A, a true short squeeze, and there's there's no real specific criteria. Um, it's just one of those situations where you kind of, if you see it, you you might say, "Well, that's a short squeeze." When when something just continues to go up, and and a lot of times on a true short squeeze, even if a you know typically if a stock or an index is going up, volatility is contracting, but if it's going up and it's just exploding higher. And volatility is also expanding. Um, you know, in my mind, that's that's a real short squeeze where you where you've got some people who are trapped short, and now they're buying back to cover, and just it's propelling the the stock or index higher. See it more in individual stocks, not necessarily an in index very often. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Yeah, I've, uh, Madam Butterfly, I've just, uh, personally, I've, I've traded enough in the morning before FOMC that it's just not something I'm interested in doing. All right, we are at the upper expected move of the day. So I got out of eight of my nine ricks at a, just a small profit. I'll leave this one runner on to see if this thing is just going to get ridiculous. It's like somebody's chiming in on the Zoom chat. Ira, aka M Fields, do me a favor, post in the Zero Live chat. I don't monitor the Zoom chat. Uh, but your questions are, do you recommend we set up those indicators I saw on the Zero DTE course? Uh, yeah, I mean, if if you're going to use some of the filters we use, they're just a quick, easy reference, you know. So, if, so if, so that I know, okay, you know, because I have specific setups that I will trade if the market's up over half percent from the open. Uh, certain trades that you know I'll, you know, I've got it on VIX, so I've got certain trades that I trade if the VIX gaps up or down. You know, so it's just a quick reference for you. So yeah, if, I would certainly suggest doing it if you have toss, no reason not to. Uh, let's see, you use E-Trade. Yeah, so those indicators are only on toss. One of our members, Aten Ra, created those. Won't, won't be able to work on E-Trade. But the... But it, it's just for easy reference. I mean, you can easily, you know, figure out if the S and P is up a half percent from the open or not without them. It's just a so you don't have to manually do the math, but you can certainly do that. I mean, you just figure out what the open is, and then you could just plot some lines on a chart. You know, whether it's on E Trade, I, I don't use E Trade, so I don't I don't know how it works, but uh, you could use Trading View or what any kind of chart just to uh, you know from 
when the market opens, calculate what's up or down a half percent. Um, you know, look at VIX, same thing, and just you know, kind of plot your lines. I do a, I do something similar here manually. These yellow dashed lines, those are just the expected move for the day. So I just take a look at um, you know the zero day options and go over here to the option chain and see. Okay, it's the beginning of the day it was plus or minus about twenty today. Chris also posts it in the morning on his uh, little snapshot. And then after the market opens, I just go in here and plot these. So now I know we're we're beyond the expected move to the upside today. Just a just a reference. Oh yeah, White Tiger. I haven't I haven't checked that out yet. I'll have to. I want to check that out. So what? So like your indicator, if the quiet brunch eight fifty to nine forty five a.m. is green, that means that one is a go to trade. Is that is that how you do that? Got it. That's cool. And then, um, so you're going to have different criteria than other people. So I assume you can go in there and adjust the filters based on how individuals trade it. Is that right? Awesome. That's cool. Thanks for doing that. I will, I'll check that out and then I will, I'll post that link in the, uh, zero DTE course, um, along with Ot and Ra's stuff. Looks like you've got everything Atenrados plus the additional things you added. Cool. Good stuff. Oh, it looks like I missed something. Cosmo, thanks. Another question regarding the DCs. We have FOMC and then the December option expiration. What's your take on calendars with the front date in this week? So option expiration doesn't mean anything to me. Um, I mean, we have options that expire every day now. Um, options expiration used to be a big deal when they only expired once a month, but anymore, it's not really anything. Uh FOMC, what what you'll see is so I've got a I've got a TGIF, for example. That I just put on yesterday. I like having these on during FOMC because a lot of times what happens is that front week will get crushed, back week options will stay a little bit bid. And so a lot of times you'll see some really decent profits come in after FOMC as long as price stays in in the range. So I like I like having calendar exposure going into FOMC. Well, my little Rick Renner's working. My PM Iron Condor needs a little pullback now. It's trading at 2730. My stop's at 3010 after being reduced. Five minutes till tranche two. Get a straddle. Tranche two straddle. Am 
Well, maybe inverted. Depends on where it shakes out here. It's right in between the strikes. We're up 0.52%. So now we are in update territory. All right, I'm going to turn on my Tranche 2 update bot with one lot, just for a little something to do. It's real close, so I'm not sure. Trade Steward uses the open slightly after the real open, so it may not fire, but I'll turn it on for one lot just, to, just in case. Uh, Lasoza with super low premiums. Does that impact my thinking regarding size for FOMC? Uh, no, no, doesn't. The only thing I would maybe do is increase my long strangle size because it'll be most likely cheaper. Maybe we'll see. It's only pricing in a 30 point expected move between now and the end of day tomorrow. Hopefully Jerome comes out with a surprise rate hike. That'd be nice. <laughs> I have day 42, 46.42. NASDAQ, the strongest, up 110. NASDAQ is up 51% year to date. SPX is up 21% year to date. <clears throat> All right, Tranche 2 is coming in. Filled at 1120. And that was on the. Uh, and when it went inverted, 45 puts, 40 calls.
a little bullish, a little bullish drunken straddle. My one three is up over 7%. My one two is up over 6% now. My six seven is up 7.5%. Some of those calendars are liking this move. Volatility's starting to pop up a little bit. Hit a low of 11.81. It's at 11.97. I don't think I'll do my Wednesday 2-5 DTE double calendar tomorrow. That would come on after after the or basically during the FOMC press conference. I think I'm going to pass on that one. My time fly that I put on with the diagonal all at the same time is now above my call strike. Got no risk to the upside on that one. The other one I adjusted today by adding another diagonal. Sitting in the middle of my double diagonal. Put on a new ES Hedgehog today. Gold hedgehogs up a little bit. MES short strangles up a little bit. Getting close to 50% on the put side. Not, not quite there. Natty gas. Tiny profit. Benoit, do me a favor, use the Zero Live chat channel. I need to turn off the Zoom chat here. No worries. First timer, I get it. Uh, yeah, so for Power Hour, I do use uh, Trade Steward, a bot, but premiums are just so low that I'm not really trading today. I did put on a tranche two, just something to do with a one lot. Um, you can find the, uh, if you go to the zero, uh, if you go to the trade plans channel, you'll see the, uh, you'll see exactly how I execute those based on different parameters. So today I just did a two to one puts the calls. 
got in the 40, it ended up going inverted. So I got the 46, 45 puts, 46, 40 calls. It's just a tiny size just to do, just to have a little bit of a bullish position on here. My PM iron condor needs a little pullback. Tranche three would go on in a few minutes. Let's see what we got there. I'll do a little tiny tranche three as well. I'll do a two lot on my tranche three, tranche three up day. Well, VIX has been kind of steadily climbing here for the last 20 minutes. 30 minutes. Back above 12. The tranche two, we're trying to creep into the sweet spot. So tranche three will start coming in in about 30 seconds. Looks like it could be a five wide strangle. Here it comes. Filled at three oh five. 
45 calls, 40 puts, five wide, two to one. So 46, 45 is the sweet spot between tranche two and three. My little Rick runner's up about 500. It's got a max upside profit of 1,200. If it gets above 4,650. What else, my friends? What else? Anything else on your mind? Any other gaps we can fill in for you? Bitcoin's on a little pullback after that quick rally. Big move down in oil, new recent lows in oil. Gold still falling after it hit all-time highs. Last time we saw the VIX this low, it was before COVID. There's January of 2020. Hit a low in April of Big movers on individual stocks. Oracle had earnings down 12%.
Lucid down eight and a half. Macy's had that big pop. It's back. It's down eight percent. Mara, hopefully you sold your Macy's. Beyond Meat up six and a half. Early indication for market on close and balance. I heard it. it hasn't printed yet. Two eighty million sell side. Meta up two and a half percent, AMD up over two and a half. NVIDIA up almost two. Semiconductors up 1%. GDX down 2.5%. Oil down 2 Retail down Oh, sorry guys. I uh I was wondering why nobody was chatting. I had my uh screen scrolled up. Um let's see, let me catch up here. Yeah, my Rick Runner is doing good. Just going to go ahead and let that run. Uh, trading naked, the four, 14%. Let's see what you're looking at. Well, that's on the zero day. That, so that's today, tomorrow, where it says 15.02%. That, that's the monthly implied volatility. The plus or minus 29.74 is the expected move. Uh, futures trades. I did take a couple, had a loser in, uh, the British pound, a loser in the notes, and then a winner in Bitcoin and a winner in gold. I'm still in gold and Bitcoin. So net net, I'm down like six. Yeah, I'm down 600 today. Uh, Bemwa, which channel can I find zero DT? So we don't post those because they're not, they're not trades that you can like copy. Uh, we just we stream live and I just show you exactly what I'm doing. But if you look in the uh, zero trade plans channel, what you'll see is you'll see exactly all the criteria I use to to trade Power Hour and all my other strategies. Uh, and each one's accompanied with the Option Omega backtest link, so it shows you all the all the detailed criteria.
Uh, La Souza, the FOMC straddle or strangle, 30 Delta strangle. Uh, that goes on about five minutes after the press conference starts. Don't look now, but we're getting a three-point pullback. Yeah, so Benoit, just to kind of continue on that. Um, so the, the idea is to learn and understand the strategies and then kind of build out how you would trade it for your own trade plan with your own position size and things like that. And then we stream every day just so we can help fill in the gaps. You can watch exactly how I do it. But I don't, I've, I don't, we don't post the trades because I don't want people trying to copy. It moves too fast. It's just trying to copy trades is just not the way to be successful. SPX at 46.43. My PM iron condor is just slightly green. Right, Mauro. Big spike, big spike in VIX. Twenty-five cents. Yeah, that's pretty normal. I, I would say that's that's what I anticipate anyway, tomorrow. I, I I would say more vol, pretty pretty steady, not necessarily expanding much. And then lower volatility after. Unless there's a surprise. <clears throat> I would say that's what happens.
My one three is at over 9%. May have to take some of that off by the end of the day. I'm going to put an order to close three of five. At 11.25. See if that hits. I haven't looked at that as a percentage, Andrew K, but something I'll do towards the end of the year. I did just um I did just contact Toss and get my commissions reduced from I was at 40 I thought I was at I thought I was lower but I was at 40 cents a contract tried to get get them down to 30 they gave me 35 No, that's just the, oh, I got filled on my uh, one three. This posted. Yeah, no trades got that's just the uh that's just the commission doesn't include exchange fees. The exchange fees as I'm aware of can't be negotiated, but I could be wrong. So what are the exchange fees on SPX like 30 52 cents so 87 cents uh i think if you've been trade lasoza i think you've been if you've been trading i mean as long as you have um I would, all you got to do is ask. I mean, they, they may say no. Um, here's what, here's what they're going to ask you. They, cause they can see your volume, right? Um, they can see how much you trade, but they're going to ask you what, what option per contract rates are you requesting? They're going to ask you if you trade any, um, if you trade any outside of TD, um, I've had them, I've had, I've had some just take my word for it. And I've had sometimes a rep will ask for a recent statement to verify what you're doing outside of TD. Uh, they'll ask you specifically about index contracts like SPX versus equity. You know, how many of those you trade? They they obviously have all you trade in TD, but they want to know what you do outside if if there is any, and then they'll they want to know if you're looking to consolidate any outside assets. So what I always say is, is that I yeah I'm considering. 
depending on I'm looking at, I'm, I would say I'm evaluating and considering consolidating assets. And, um, you know, here's what I do. Because I am, I mean, you know, I may move some to tradier if they, you know, if they start. So I'm always looking to consolidate or move money. So I'm not, uh, not lying, but, you know, they just, they want to know if there's other outside assets and if you're, you know, what you're, what you're trading outside, if they can get a piece of it, they want to know if they can get a piece of it. Andrew K, yeah, you got to get that down. You shouldn't be paying 50 cents, I don't think. Yeah, anything that you can say to them that, yeah, maybe you don't have, maybe you're not trading another account, but you have more assets and cash that you want to, that you're going to be moving in, you know, all the, anything like that you want to tell them. I think you can request a reduction every three months, maybe. Could be wrong on that. Well, I kind of pulled back to the expected move area. All right, so my two little power hour tranches are slightly green. My PM iron condor is slightly green. And my tranche three is at 27%. Need to trail that stop a little bit. Yeah, just buy a buy an option and hit confirm and send and it'll show you what you're paying. Oh, aggregate on the monitor tab somewhere. Yeah, I wanted to request, make another request before the Schwab took over. I wasn't sure how they treat it.
2.3 billion sell side. So it jumped up. Uh, I've heard of people getting lower rates with Tasty, but yeah, it's a pretty significant volume before they'd even consider it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close my Rick. That was my last wreck at 1050. All right, seven minutes to go. Uh, Gnome Gardus Lamiente. <laughs> Sorry if I butchered that. Uh, I haven't been transferred over to Schwab yet, but they, I would assume it shouldn't be that big of a deal to get you permissions to trade option spreads. Have you already applied and they denied you? Uh, Dark Avenger, I'll close them near the open like I always do tomorrow. I just closed part of my 1-3. It was already up over 10%. My six sevens up almost fifteen percent. My one two is also up eight and a half. All right, five till. I'm gonna I'm gonna close out my uh, PM.
uh, bounced on me. Looks I'm going to scratch or take a, maybe even a small loss on my PM now. Oh, it's bouncing. It's not what I wanted. All right, filled at 25.75 on my PM. My tranche two and three are nice. I'll let them ride. Forty five is the sweet spot. Anywhere above forty is fine. Three minutes to go. We can get a little push up here into the close. My tranche three is up 95%. Tranche two is up 31, 28. Ended up taking a $660 loss on my PM at that little push up. Ended up taking me from a profit to a loss. Little markup on the close. A little over a minute. I think there's a communication issue going on in the chat right now. <laughs> Bianca speaking German. Elliot speaking the Queen's English. All right, get a little bump. 15 seconds, get up to 45. Tranche three shows 100% profit. Ding, ding, ding. 46, 43.73. All right, so a little over a thousand bucks on my two power hour tranches. Minus 660 on my PM Iron Condor, plus 2580. 
So on my bot trades, a little over 3K on the day, plus my Rick, whatever that scratched out, maybe 800 to 1,000. And actually my tranche two and three together will net about a little over 1,100, yeah. All right, winner, winner. Even the low premiums, baby, let's go. Uh, all right, so reminder, tomorrow, Chad will be streaming at the Open. Uh, and then I will be streaming during FOMC, so starting at about 12.45 p.m. Central. And so we'll stream for a while during FOMC and then no, no power hour tomorrow. All right, all. Take care. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.